This video will show how to submit a Notice of Intent NOI, using GEOS. Once you've created your account and are logged into GEOS, look to the left side of the page under My Dashboard and click the blue Start New Application button. To create a new NOI, click Start on the Stormwater Construction General Permit. Now choose the appropriate permit coverage. If you hover your cursor over the question marks, you'll see an explanation of the coverage type. We'll choose Standalone Construction. Click Next. Now click the blue Create New Facility button and fill out the facility information form. Required fields are marked with a red star. If you don't have a facility and or property address, type a description in this field of the location. For example, Highway 100 or intersection of Highway 5 and Highway 515. If you know the latitude and longitude coordinates, you may enter them here. The form allows coordinate precision up to, but not more than, six decimal places. Now, if you don't know the latitude and longitude values, you can use a map to populate these fields. Click the Map It button, and you'll launch Google Maps with a red pin marking the location of the facility. By default, the map is slightly transparent, so you may want to click the full screen icon in the upper right. You can pan by left-clicking, holding, and dragging the map. Use the plus or minus buttons at the lower right to zoom your view in or out. Or, if your mouse has a click wheel, you can roll it forward and back to change the zoom level. If you'd like to add terrain to the street map, mouse over or click Map at the upper left, then check the box next to Terrain. Click Satellite to view imagery, and check the Labels box to see road names and other labels combined with the aerial image. You can also left click, hold, and drag the point location marker itself. Let's get out of the full screen mode by either pressing the escape key or clicking the icon at the upper right. Here you can see that if we move the marker, the XY coordinate values will be changed accordingly. So if you do move the marker, you need to be sure to click Update to save the change. After using the mapping tool, make sure you also click Save here. If your coverage type is common development, you can assign the primary permittee to the secondary permittee by selecting Secondary Permittee, clicking Next, choosing your facility, as has been covered, then scrolling down to the Secondary Permittee section and clicking the blue Search Primary Permittee button. A pop-up window will appear, and you can search for the primary permittee using facility name, address, county, or GAR number. Select the appropriate primary permittee, then click Associate. Next, select the appropriate ownership type in the drop-down menu and fill in the remaining secondary permittee information. If you're submitting a tertiary permit, there should be no active primary. If there is an active primary, then you should submit an NOI for a secondary permit. If you need to change the permit from a tertiary to a secondary, Scroll down to the bottom of the page and select Previous. This will take you back to the Coverage Desired section. Then you'll need to complete the Site, Owner, Operator Information section. If the owner and or operator information is the same as the responsible official, you can just click this button and GEOS will auto-populate the appropriate fields. Then you'll need to click the drop-down menu and select the appropriate ownership type. The remaining facility contact information fields, although not currently starred, also need to be filled in. 
Construction Site Activity Information and Fee Calculations. When you click on the start and completion date, a drop-down calendar appears. Select the dates that apply. If the site is regulated by an LIA, click the Yes radio button. Additional questions will appear. If you're unsure if the site is regulated by an LIA, click View LIA Map. Fees are associated with primary notices of intent. The fee is $40 an acre if the project is under the jurisdiction of a local issuing authority and $80 an acre if there is no local issuing authority or the project does not fall under local issuing authority jurisdiction. Enter in the number of acres disturbed to the nearest one-tenth of an acre and click Calculate. Please be aware that if you're filling out a secondary or tertiary submittal, you'll have to report the disturbed acreage to the nearest one one hundredth of an acre. Click the checkbox next to the appropriate construction activity. Select the appropriate stream classification, sampling of receiving streams, and sampling of outfalls. When selecting the appropriate outfall or falls, additional boxes will appear. Fill in these boxes before moving to the next section. Once you've entered all the appropriate information under Receiving Water Information, continue on the same page to Section 4, Certifications. Carefully read the certifications, then click the checkboxes to confirm the agreement. Once you've done this, click Save and then Next. To mail the ESPC plan, click here to get the mailing address to the appropriate EPD office. To submit a digital ESPC plan, select Online and then upload the file. To hand deliver the ESPC plan, select Other. To mail the location map, click here to get the mailing address of the appropriate EPD office. To submit a digital location map, select Online and then upload the file. To hand deliver a map, select Other. Click Save and then Next. The green check marks indicate that all requirements have been met. Click Next. Under Total Payable, click the drop down menu to select the method of payment. Then click Next. On the Submit Application page, click the empty checkbox to confirm the agreement, answer the security question, and enter your PIN number. Then click the Submit button to complete your application. Once you submit your application, you'll be taken to the receipt page. Click here to print the initial submittal receipt. If you're paying by check, make sure to include a copy of the submittal receipt with the check to send to the Land Disturbance Fees lockbox. Lastly, record the submittal ID for your records.